This program has been made possible in part by Ameritech, with additional support from the Stratton Cheeseman Companies, providing insurance and related services to businesses and professionals. Hello, I'm Martin Bookspan, welcoming you to a performance by the Verdere Trio. The combination of violin, clarinet, and piano is a comparatively rare one. And so the Verdere Trio has commissioned music for that combination from some of the leading composers of our time. In this series, we'll hear some of those works. Today, the trio subtitled Lake Samish by Alan Hovannis. Hovannis was born in 1911 in Somerville, Massachusetts. Much of his music is peppered with exotic flavor, including Oriental, Balinese, and Indian influences. He has been amazingly prolific, numbering among his output more than 60 symphonies, many songs and choral works, and much chamber music. He has lived in Seattle, Washington for nearly two decades. His trio, called Lake Samish, takes its name from a peaceful lake snuggled among wooded hills in Bellingham, Washington. special feeling for it. It seems to be a very peaceful place, a lake surrounded by uh, hills and uh, kind of protected from the noisiness and uh, violence of the world. I always reflect nature in my music anyway. I'm inspired by the mountains here, that's why I live here. And uh, I, but I, uh, this piece is, um, not quite in the style of a mountain. That's, I need an orchestra for that. So this is, uh, seemed to be suitable. And the Hovannis is, for us, one of the most wonderful uh, contrasts. Uh, it's, it's a contrast really from all the other works that have been commissioned by us. It's a much more tonal, more melodic, lovely, haunting, beautiful piece. I felt that our mu music of this century was so poor in melody. It's uh, so intellectualized and, and stiff that when they asked me when I was young to, if I'd like to have a scholarship and study with Nadia Boulanger, uh, I said, no, I, I would kill me. I can't do it. I, I want to stay here. The music uh, itself, the score, in this case, looked very simple, uh, deceptively simple. The rhythm seems very straightforward, uh, except that then there are very ri interesting rhythmic shifts. Now some composers are very specific as to what they would like to hear in their piece, very specific with dynamics, articulations, etc. Uh, we were a little surprised when we received the Hovannis that there weren't more indications, and in a sense that put us more in our metal to uh, come to grips with the piece and, and make it into something artistically uh, exciting and, and satisfying. Well, say that the third movement has three different tempos and the last one has two, that it should be really clear at the end of mm -hmm. one when it's finished. Movement and into you the other. Because I think yeah. people are really confused, I think, sometimes. No, I think the deepest feeling is is uh, expressed can be expressed in in very few notes. There are very few people can do that because they uh, many times uh, feeling is expressed by a tremendous uh, orchestra all playing together or something very noisy uh, or, or something very delightfully beautiful with all kinds of liquid sounds and uh, uh, things like that. Those have their place, all kinds of gorgeous colors. But uh, sometimes if you just have three voices or even two and only that in the hands of a master can be very moving. It's very difficult to do. When I was very young, uh, I, uh, I thought I'd be, I wanted to be an astronomer, and uh, uh, up to the time I was seven years old, uh, I thought that would be my life work. Uh, but uh, I remember going, 
going to school after a sickness, I was out some years, childish sickness, sickness of some kind. I came back to school and uh, they were having music appreciation. Uh, and uh, for the first time I heard a good piece of music. And that was uh, the song of Schubert. And uh, so I thought if Mr. Schubert wrote that, perhaps I should write down the, the, some of the melodies I hear in my head because I thought everybody hears music in their heads all the time. So I, I always did, but I thought that's nothing. Uh, but then I started to write seriously. I think it's very important uh, if we're going to have new music that's, that's worth anything, it should be uh, commissioned by orchestras or players. And in this way, they can have something new to do. And uh, we also have the stimulus to write something that's better than usual, hopefully. In the Lake Shamish Trio, uh, the first movement is prelude and fugue in form. Uh, the prelude is sort of uh, lyrical, uh, the piano and clarinet playing a song-like melody, and then the violin continuing the melody into the higher register. And then the fugue that follows is a three-part fugue, violin, and then clarinet, and the piano always playing uh, this uh, one of the parts, but in repeated notes, because I use repeated notes uh, to keep a long note alive on the piano, because that's the trouble with the piano. The note dies as soon as you play it, and it shouldn't be played loudly in this case. Uh, but the use of repeated notes is a quality which comes from uh, the kanun, which is the ancestor of the piano, but it's a Near Eastern instrument, and you play with little hammers on the strings. And you can make a song uh, and keep the sound alive.
But the second movement is uh, simply a fugue, beginning with clarinet, then violin, and then uh, the piano has the two octaves apart so that you get a more brilliant quality. It's very rapid. Ends up, however, leaving the violin all by itself with the piano playing star-like sounds. Uh, the third movement is uh, like a sort of grand hymn, and the hymn uh, has different has endings on different notes of the scale, which uh, I like to do in hymn-like melodies so it's to make it more interesting.
Then we have number four. This is like interstellar space. Uh, the piano is playing star-like, detached, uh, long notes, slow notes. And the clarinet plays a sort of a melancholy, lonely melody. Number five, this is the aria and jala. And uh, the aria is a slow, sort of expressive melody sung by a violin. In a dream, I saw a manuscript of Handel. And uh, Handel is one of my favorite composers. So uh, I guess when I woke up, I decided I'd try and write a melody that he might like.